Hey, it's Justin from Flipwise. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the Flipwise ledger. The ledger is where you log all of your general business expenses in Flipwise. So that means basically everything except for your inventory costs. So if you have uh, shipping supplies like boxes or tape or subscription services like eBay store subscriptions or your Flipwise membership fee, you're gonna to wanna to log all of that in the ledger as general business expenses so that that can be accounted for on your income statement or on your tax report in the future. So we're going to walk through how to use the ledger today. We're looking right now at the Flipwise dashboard. To get to the ledger, you're going to click ledger in the left-hand navigation, and you'll land on this screen here, which is the list of all of my existing ledger entries. I'll walk through what each of these things mean here. You'll see that each has a date, which is the date that I've added this specific ledger entry. You're gonna see a ledger entry type, so expense or non-cash expense or credit. You're gonna see the amount that the ledger entry is for, the vendor, which is where the expense was occurred. So in this case, I bought some bubble wrap from American Bubble Boy for $56.41, and it was an expense, and this happened on January 15th. You can write a description. You can also connect a ledger expense to a, a product in your inventory, we'll get to that in a second, and then give it a Schedule C category as well. So the way that you add new ledger entries is right here on top, you'll have a green button, and this pops up a modal like this asking if you're adding a general business expense or credit, or if you're logging mileage for a business trip. So you can use this both for adding general business expenses as well as logging mileage. We'll start with adding a general business expense here. Uh, when you do that, you're gonna select the type, an expense or a credit, and we'll say it's for $5 and I'll keep the date today. Now it's gonna give you a list of Schedule C categories like this. This comes directly from the IRS. This is optional, so if what you're adding to the ledger doesn't fit into one of these categories specifically, that's okay. You don't have to give it a category or you could give it the category of other, uh, but this is specifically the list of these categories come directly from the IRS under what's called their Schedule C categories. And if you give it a Schedule C category, that'll just help you later when you're filing your taxes um, and entering in this data into your, your tax software. Uh, if you have a Schedule C category to find, that might make it a little bit easier, but totally optional. I'm not going to give it a ledger or a category at this point. Uh, we'll give it a, a vendor. Let's say that I'm buying some boxes off of eBay. So I'm going to go ahead and select eBay. And I'll just say boxes here for the description. I'm not going to give it a related product. I'll tell you what that does here in a second. And I'll click save. You'll see that new ledger expense pops up here and uh, all the information is there. Let's quickly run through the logging of mileage as well. You can click that. Other option to log the mileage, you can define either a total distance driven or uh, starting and ending odometer reading. We'll just go ahead and say total distance driven. I'll say I drove 10 miles. And it's going to automatically calculate that expense for you based on the per mile credit. Uh, and that's according to where you live. And so if you're in the United States, we're going to default to the United States credit. If you're in Canada or the UK or in Australia, we'll default to the per mile or kilometer credit for that location. And it'll automatically calculate it up for you and write out a description as well saying distance driven 10 uh, per per mile credit is 70 cents and the total is, is there. You can, you can select the date as well. You can edit this uh, trip description as well, or if you need to overwrite that per mile credit, you can also do that as well. That's if in some countries the per mile credit changes depending on how many miles you log. So we're going to leave it the same for now and just go ahead and add it. And you'll notice that this adds that as a non-cash expense. That's because a non-cash expense basically means that you didn't actually incur any costs uh, like cash. You didn't pay any money out of your pocket for this expense, but you still want to log it for tax purposes. And so by not my categorizing it as a non-cash expense, and you can categorize anything as a non-cash expense, by the way. So I could go back in and say, hey, this expense for boxes was actually a non-cash expense. I'm not going to do that, but you could if you needed to. But by marking it as non-cash, what that's going to do is it's not, it's going to make sure that that expense does not show up on your income statement, but it does show up on your tax report. And so just to talk a little bit about that, uh, Flipwise has an income statement which shows all of your revenue for any time period. And so this is all the revenue coming in and all the expenses going out. If I added a non-cash expense like that mileage, it's not going to show up on this income statement because I didn't actually spend that money. But it is going to show up on the tax report here if I click into this tax report. Uh, because that mileage, I want that mileage logged for tax reasons, but again, I didn't pay for it, so it shouldn't show up on the on the income statement. But we'll 
uh, pop back in here to the ledger and finish up talking through this. You can filter up here by expense, credit, or non-cash expense. You can see here, that's pretty obvious how that works. Um, I'll just put it back to all here. You'll notice some of these expenses and credits have this little icon here with a lightning bolt. That means we've automatically ingested this from eBay. And so this eBay, this fee right here for $27.95, that's my eBay store subscription fee. We'll also bring in automatically any other um, expenses or credits coming from eBay that are not associated with any orders in your inventory. And so sometimes you'll get like, I don't know, random things like maybe a uh, shipping label adjustment or some other miscellaneous fee refund will will pop up in here and well anything that we that flipwise detects you've been charged for or you've gotten a credit for uh, it's going to show up in this uh, in this uh, expense report here or I'm sorry in this ledger entry here so but that's what, that's what that lightning bolt means you can also filter, so you can change, uh, it's only filtering by date, so if you wanna see only ledger entries from last year, for example, you can do that. Uh, and then you can also export, and this will just email you a CSV, a comma separated value file uh, that you can open up in spreadsheet software if you need to. So I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can do that at any point. The last thing I'll show you is this related product uh, field right here. So I'll take this as an example. On November 14th, I had an expense of $10.37 from eBay where I bought a charger for a Nintendo 3DS. So the situation was as I sourced a Nintendo 3DS, it did not have the charger, so I had to buy one. I went on eBay and I bought it for $10.37 and I went ahead and associated that charge, that ledger entry, with that Nintendo 3DS in my inventory. And you'll see right here, I'll click on that. And this, this 3DS is already sold, but you'll scroll down here, you'll see that expense applied 1037 for eBay for the charger. And that is included in the costs here of the product details and my net return, my ROI, all of that reflects that uh, expense that I applied here. You'll see that additional expense of 1037. So that's really good if you have to buy accessories or anything like that. If you have to buy a specialty box to ship some golf clubs or something, you can add that expense to the ledger and it will automatically be deducted from your net return on that individual item. So kind of nice to be able to do that. And that's that's the ledger. That's basically how you use it. Oh, last thing is search. You can also just search. I could just search for a box, for example, and see any of the boxes that I've bought over the last year. So I think that's it. That's how you use the ledger. So hopefully this is helpful. Thank you.